Good evening, everyone, and welcome into the Big Time Boiler Show. I am your host, the Big Time Boiler. Well, I guess let's do a uh, quick recap of uh, last weekend's game and uh, upcoming look at the uh, Syracuse game here this Saturday. Um, <laughs> not much to talk about, really, uh, when it comes to Purdue, Indiana State. Uh, Purdue obviously dominated like I thought they would. Uh, I was thinking like a four. I think on, on the previous video, I said like 49 to 7. Turned out it was 56 0. Uh, Purdue did exactly what it needed to do. I mean, they came out the very first play on defense, caused a fumble that pretty much set the tone. Uh, they dominated. Defense got a little bored. Uh, I think gave up maybe one or two long passes, but then shut them down in the red zone, uh, forced a four and out, and then they, uh, or not four and out, but a, you know, forced them a turnover on downs and then a turnover in the end zone. But uh, just full out domination, uh, really. All Purdue did. I think the first possession um, targeted Tyrone Tracy, and pretty much the rest of the first half, they uh, Aiden just threw the ball to Charlie Jones, who uh, was uncoverable. So uh, worked out perfectly uh, for them. Uh, Fifty-six nothing. I mean, Indiana State's not a good football team. Let's <laughs> no mistake about that. Let's not get it twisted. They're not a good football team. They're FCS. Uh, but hey, you know, there's some teams out there struggling with FCS opponents, <clears throat> Iowa and uh, some others, Nebraska. But uh, Purdue took care of business, 56 0. I mean, really couldn't ask for anything better than that. It came away healthy for the most part, as far as I know. Uh, obviously, though, before the game um, happened, uh, the announcement of Jalen Graham being out, I think, I think, what was it, three, I think three to five weeks is what, or four to five weeks, something around there, uh, was announced. I think a few. Actually, might have been actually game day. I can't, yeah, I think it was game day or the uh, day before game day uh, that was announced. Uh, that's a big loss, obviously. I said it before, uh, my brother, that uh, Jalen Graham is the one player you cannot lose on the defense, at least for the year. Good news is here is he's only out for a few games. Um, hopefully, um, they get him back for um, Minnesota. You know, we're definitely going to need him back for Minnesota. That would be a Let's hope he can get healthy enough to play in that game. He's going to be needed. But um, he's obviously our, our best defensive player. Though. However, there is one player that has a completely stepped up that has kind of come out, I don't want to say out of nowhere, but uh, has been terrific so far this year, besides one missed tackle, and that's Kane, uh, Sunusi Kane. He's a, a bigger safety. I don't know his exact measurables, but I feel like he's like a six foot one, 200, you know, 200 plus kind of guy. A um, little smaller than Jalen Graham, but he's he's a stud. He's uh, been playing extremely well, was the leading tackler against Indiana State. So that makes the loss a little bit – or makes it hurt a little bit less, but still that's a big-time loss. But anyway, besides that, Purdue came away healthy. You know, Aiden was a sharp – he was like 16 for 18 or something around there. Charlie Jones went off for like 130 and three touchdowns. Now Charlie Jones has 21 catches equaling – uh, his catches last year for Iowa, uh, and he has four touchdowns on the year, which is one more than he had at Iowa last year. And he's, I think, 284 yards uh, receiving, which is, I think, like 20 or 30 below what he had last year. So after this game coming this weekend, uh, he should pass all his numbers from last year. But anyway, so again, not much to talk about. Domination of Indiana State, exactly what we wanted to see happened. Uh, the ground game went over 200 yards, which I was hoping for. Uh, we got to see... A lot of Dylan Downing, who honestly looked very good, uh, looked very quick, in my opinion. And then Maccabee, who ran extremely hard and I think has a, a promising future. So, uh, again, not much really a, a whole lot to talk about when it comes to that game. Uh, Purdue did what it needed to do. And like I said, that's not exactly, you know, that doesn't always happen, as uh, you can tell in college football. Um, upsets happen. And Teams sometimes don't take those games seriously, and it's like a score of 31 to 7, or you know, or even a, a 14 to 10, or whatever. So, the fact that Purdue was able to blow them out, not allow any touchdowns, is, 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 a, is, a, is a good, you know, it's a I don't want to overshoot it, but it was a it's a it's a you know, a, a convincing stat. So, you can take away a little bit from that, but anyway, let's talk about this game coming up against Syracuse. So, this game. I think before the season started, Syracuse, I don't know what the projected record, projected record was supposed to be, but this was not considered a good football team. Um, I think people probably thought three and nine, four and eight, something like that. You know, the last, they had a really good year in 2018. They won 10 games. 
2019, though, I want to say. Well, hold on, let me, let me look at the schedule. I got it actually posted up here. Let's see. Um, yeah, 2019. So let me back up. Actually, let me back up even further. So this team, let's go back to 2014. 2014, three and nine. 2015, four and eight. 2016, four and eight. 2017, four and eight. I think Dino Babers. I okay. Here it is. Yeah, Dino Babers came in in 2016. They were four and eight. 2017, four and eight. Uh, 2018, they had a really good year. They had um, they went ten and three. 2019, five and seven. 20, which is a disappointment coming off a ten win season. Um, 2020 COVID year, you know, I put an asterisk on that, but they won one game, one and 10, uh, 2021 last year, they went five and seven. I mean, that's, I mean, again, Purdue hasn't exactly set the world on fire, you know, from 2014, to 2016, they've been decent. They've been better than Syracuse since 2016 on besides that 10 win season, but Syracuse has not exactly set the world on fire. Does that mean anything for this year? Not really. But I feel like the fans there, you know, if they were thinking, oh, you know, this is going to be a four and eight, maybe five and seven, the best type of year. Maybe we can get, maybe we can get to a bowl game. That'd be awesome. Well, what happens? Syracuse apparently got uh, Virginia's, I think, quarterback coach and for sure offensive coordinator. And apparently they've done a pretty good job. But what's happened here? Well, they beat a Louisville team at home. I think 31 to seven, something around there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they, they, and I watched most of that game and they handled business. They beat Louisville pretty good. Uh, as Purdue fans, we were hoping Louisville was improved. Um, they look pretty, pretty crappy in that game. Let's, let's be honest. And, you know, Syracuse probably had something to do with that. Sometimes the week one is, is can be week one can be a kind of an oddball thing. You know, some teams play really well out of the gate. Some teams struggle. And I think Louisville, they struggled. They did not look good. I think Syracuse looked better than maybe what they are even. Well, if that make if that makes if that makes sense, I think uh, I think Syracuse is an improved team, no doubt about it. But <laughs> going to some of these message boards, and um, I don't know, and I'm not I, and I'm not a Syracuse expert, um, and I'm not even exactly sure you know who they added this year as far as transfer portal. I think a lot of the guys are returning off of, of off of a five and seven and a one and ten team. But <laughs> you go to some of these message boards. And Syracuse is acting like they have the 85 Bears defense. Um, Talking like they have a better secondary than Penn State. Let's calm down a second, Syracuse. And, hey, Syracuse might win this weekend. You know, Purdue is not exactly – they took care of business last year. But in the Jeff Brom era, you know, Jeff's dropped some games where they should win. Uh, Rutgers is an example, Eastern Michigan, so Nevada. You know, hopefully this is not one of those games. But I don't want to say Syracuse is overrated, but – all they did was beat a down Louisville team and they took care of business against UConn, who was absolutely terrible. And as Purdue fans, we know that we went up there and whooped them 49, nothing last year. So how good is Syracuse? I think we're going to find out. I think Purdue is ex- being extremely undervalued still. I, I don't understand. You know, this is a team that won nine games last year. Granted, they lost David Bell and George Koloftis, but I keep telling people, Hey, and Milton, Wright, Let's put him in the equation. This team is pretty much the team that played Tennessee in the bowl game and won 48 to 45. I mean, you're returning pretty much 18 starters from that team, including the offensive line, minus Tyler Witt. Uh, you return a six-year quarterback. You bring in Charlie Jones, who I had very high expectations for. Um, and I thought, honestly, I thought he'd have, he'd have a pretty big year. I think I kept saying 750 yards, seven touchdowns. Well, he's on pace to easily surpass that, and he's even better than I thought. But I knew there was talent there. Iowa wasn't utilizing him right. I did not realize he was this good of a route runner, and I don't think this is a joke. I think Charlie Jones is that good. Um, you know, this this is going to sound maybe ridiculous to some, but I, this Purdue offense right now reminds me of the St. Louis, or I said St. Louis, <laughs> Los Angeles Rams um, with Matthew Stafford. And uh, good Lord, I'm just – drawing cooper cup sorry it was drawing complete blank stafford and cup you know stafford might be accused of targeting cup too much the thing is cup always gets open and this is what's happening with purdue yeah purdue actually has a lot of good options but o'connell's first read is charlie jones and charlie jones is getting open so he's going to go to charlie jones you know if 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 charlie jones is covered up or o'connell doesn't think he has the window He's going to go to somebody else. The fact of the matter is, so far in six quarters of play, 
Charlie Jones is what is, has been open. I mean, I think he's the number one. Uh, I don't know the exact stat, but he's in the, I think he has the most catches um, to drop percentage uh, ratio, something like that. I think he's pretty, he has like no drops or maybe one drop. Um, you, you know, people are like, oh, they need to find a number two receiver. They have plenty of talent at receiver. Heck, they have Payne Durham, one of the best tight ends in the country that only has 50 yards on the year, pretty much didn't play against Indiana State. This Purdue team has weapons. Um, I've seen some Syracuse fans, well, we just got to shut down Charlie Jones. You can try to shut him down, which you might, but Purdue, Purdue's got plenty of talent at the wide receiver position. I mean, Marshawn Rice looked very good against Penn State. You still have Sheffield, who's been very good now for uh, last year, including the first game. Again, Indiana State pretty much was the Charlie Jones and Tyrone Tracy show, mainly the Jones show, and that was it. Um, those are the first options. Didn't need to go to anybody else. But there is talent here on this Purdue squad, and hopefully Syracuse – players and team are feeling overconfident like their fans and Purdue goes in there and punches them in the mouth. This is a very good, this is a good Purdue football team, folks. I think you guys know that. I think most of my subscribers are Purdue fans. This is a good team. They should have beat Penn state. Quite frankly, they look like the better team than Penn state. Most of the night, they just couldn't get it done. I think Jeff Brown didn't trust his run game all the way. Hopefully Jeff realizes, you know, this week against a three, three, five, he can run the ball on these guys. He can get passes, um, short passes, maybe all day against this defense. Um, I mean, I think Syracuse right now is giving up 78% completion against opposing teams. Um, and I've heard some people, Syracuse, fans, well, that's strength against strength. Uh, no, it's not. Purdue will nickel and dime you all day long. Aiden O'Connell throws 72% completion percentage. He will take short throws all day, and then he'll beat you long. That's what Purdue does. So this is a very interesting matchup. Again, Syracuse fans probably aren't going to like hearing this, but I think Purdue wins this game if they handle their business. Now, a lot can happen. Things We've all seen it. Things can go haywire. I think Purdue can win this game by two touchdowns. I think they're the better team. They have the better defense. They have the better offense. They have the better special teams. This is a better football team than Syracuse. I think Syracuse is riding high. They've had two good wins. I mean, well, UConn in, in a down little team, but still, hey, you, you can't help who's on your schedule. They took care of business. Um, Schrader is playing very well right now, but they've not faced a team as good as Purdue. I think this Purdue team is much better than Louisville. Again, I think Purdue could win a, a 31 to 21 ball game or a 38 to 24 or something like that. I think, I think Purdue handles business here. I really do. Again, not saying, you know, anything can happen in college football. You know, it doesn't take a genius to tell you that, but if Purdue plays its best game, and Syracuse plays its best game. I think Purdue's a much better team. I really do. Uh, and the proof's in the pudding. I mean, just look at look at the records. And in in uh, Syracuse is playing in the ACC. You know, uh, Purdue granted plays in a down Big Ten West, but still, uh, I would take probably the Big Ten West against the ACC. So that's my opinion. Syracuse fans aren't going to like this. You know, maybe it looks stupid if Purdue gets beat, um, but. You know, I'm uh, sticking to my story so far in the year. I don't toot my own horn, but uh, I've been I've been pretty. It's only been two games, but I've I've called it like I've seen it. And I've been pretty close. I thought Purdue would beat Penn State. I think it was uh, I think I said 30, 30 27 and if Purdue would have done what they should have done, they would have won thirty one twenty eight. They would have ran out the clock. They didn't do it. They lost. I thought it you know it was close to a coin flip game. I thought Purdue would handle Indiana State, which I think most Purdue fans did. Uh, I did forty nine seven. So I, I've been. You know, pretty close right there. And this week I'm thinking Purdue handles business and, you know, wins by 10 to 14 points. Um, I said, I don't think Syracuse realizes how good of a Purdue football team this is. And it's kind of frustrating uh, that, you know, some fans respect them, but this is a team that won nine games last year and pretty much returned majority, not return a good, good portion of their uh, returning starters. Plus their six year quarterback, who's a stud. And I've heard comments about, you know, Purdue's got to play in a dome. Um, playing against Syracuse, you know, fans going to be loud. I, I think 50,000, that might not be right. That might be lower than that. I think it's it's no more than 50,000, but I think it's like 40 something. But, uh, you know, it's, it, I'm sure it's going to get loud in there. It's going to be a tough environment. But, hey, this Purdue team last year, they played the number two team in the nation at Iowa and just destroyed them. They played at Notre Dame. They played at Nebraska. They played at um, Ohio State. They played. 
uh, Wrigley Field, but that doesn't really count because Northwestern was down, and there's probably more Purdue fans than there were North, Northwestern fans. But they played uh, in the bowl game, um, which was in Nashville against Tennessee, which was like probably, I don't know, 70% Tennessee fans, 30% Purdue fans. So this team is a veteran group that's played on the road many times and have been very successful on the road. So I think they'll be able to handle business. I don't think they're going to get rattled. This is also a Purdue team that's shown it can uh, it can survive, survive the first punch. You know, there's been games uh, like the Penn State game, you know, where they went down, uh, I think, about 10, 10 points, 11 points, something like that. Um, Tennessee, I can't, I don't remember the exact number, but, you know, this team's been down two touchdowns a couple times now, and they fought their way back and uh, have won or gotten right into it. So, you know, if I, I expect Syracuse to come out pretty amped up, juiced up, it's going to be important for Purdue uh, to do what they do and, and not get their head down if, 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 if Syracuse goes on and, you know, scores a touchdown and, you know, gets a turnover and it's 10 nothing right away, you know, don't panic. You know, Purdue could win that game still uh, uh, 28 to 17. I mean, it's not unheard of. So looking forward to it. Uh, we owe Dino for, I think he beat us, I believe, when he went to Syracuse. And um, no, not Syracuse. He was at um, Bowling Green. I think he played Hazel uh, when he was at Bowling Green. He absolutely crushed us. So we, uh, we owe him one. But uh, anyway, uh, I think it's going to be a good, decent game. I think. Uh, you know, again, I, th- I expect Syracuse to play the best game. This game kind of rem- I, I think I meant to say this earlier and I didn't say it, but this game reminds me of a um, just kind of looking at Syracuse's record. It reminds me of Purdue back in the um, I guess Danny Hope, maybe late Joe Tiller era when I was a student. Um, you know, we thought, um, or even later too, the early Daryl Hazel, you know, maybe we won two games or something like that against you know, below par competition we felt pretty good like yeah we can we can totally get this win even i think maybe jeff brown's early tenure uh we can totally get this win um you know we have uh uh, actually two examples we have tcu or virginia tech coming in um or even i think cincinnati when hazel's you know we we got this uh we can beat these guys and you know the program that's been uh pretty pretty good the last couple years um you know, came in and whooped us or we went there and they whooped us. So it kind of reminds me of that a little bit, you know, they're feeling good. You're, you're feeling high. And then a, a good team comes in and smacks you in the mouth and shows you, dang, that's what a good football team looks like. So I hope that is what we see on Saturday. I really hope that Purdue comes out, feels disrespected, punches those guys in the mouth and, and quite frankly, wins by two touchdowns. We'll see, but Hey, I'm willing to go to the bat for these guys. I think this is a good team. This is a nine win type team. This is a top six team in the Big Ten. This is a good team. You know, I think it's Minnesota and Peru in the Big Ten West right now, and I think that game against uh, – or excuse me, that game at Minnesota is absolutely huge. So anyway, uh, that's what I got. I uh, don't want to go too much longer. I think the, that pretty much gets to it all. But, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, if any Syracuse fan is watching this, you know, no disrespect to your program. Uh, I just think, uh, hey, if you beat Purdue – if you guys beat Purdue, I will take my hat off to you, and you guys should be ranked. So I think, again, this is a good Purdue team. Don't take them lightly because there's a chance this team could win by two touchdowns. But anyway, that's for me, the Big Time Boiler. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Like, like the video if you like. Anyway, we'll see you later, man. God bless and boiler up.